there was a little girl who wanted to catch a butterfly in her mother's garden because she wanted to take it to school for show and tell to show all her classmates. And in the process of trying to catch the butterfly, what she did is she trampled over all of her mother's flowers. Some of the most hurtful and heinous things have been done throughout history with good intentions. The Church of Christ. We're going to talk about it. Let's get it. My name is Jermaine and thank y'all for joining us on That Christian Fam. If growing in the faith is important to you, hit that subscribe button because over here we like to encourage, empower, and give you everyday practical Christian advice on real life situations. We drop videos whenever we drop videos. So hit that notification bell because for the first hour, we respond to comments immediately. All right, y'all, let's talk about the Church of Christ. Now, it has its roots in the restoration movement and it was originally founded because it was comprised of a group of believers who got tired of denominations and that sounds good right and so they said we're getting tired of all these denominations so let's go back to a pre-denominational church of Christ and in doing so what they did is they established something called the Church of Christ now that sounds good right however let's keep on digging now throughout my history I know that there have been people within the faith and people outside of the faith they have looked at people within the Church of Christ as if it's a cult and I'm wondering like okay if you keep getting questioned on whether or not you're a cult are you really a cult are there some cultish things about what you believe that makes people question you and call you a cult or ask if you're a cult? Now, I ain't about to jaw y'all to death with all my disagreements with the Church of Christ, but I'm just going to name my top three disagreements with the Church of Christ. Number one, they believe that instruments in worship is ungodly. Now, I do remember that the Old Testament encourages us to praise God with instruments, while the New Testament doesn't say anything about praising God or anything against praising God with instruments. So you have to scratch your head and wonder, where did they get this belief from? Now, there are some congregations within this organization that do have instruments, and the ones that don't have instruments are frown upon those that do have instruments. Now, you do have individuals within this organization organization that believe that it's okay to have instruments but at the core of this organization's beliefs they believe that you are unbiblical and you are ungodly if you have instruments in worship y'all that type of dogmatism sounds very much like a cult but we gonna go on and call it sketchy or heretical at best number two you have to be baptized in the Church of Christ in order to be saved. Now, when I first heard this, I'm like, okay, well, you know, I, I think I'm straight, you know, because I've been baptized, right? You know, even though we don't believe that baptism saves you, and we're going to get into that a little bit later. But no, as you dig further, you find that they believe that if you are not baptized within the Church of Christ, meaning within their organization, that you are not saved. And y'all, I couldn't believe it when I found this out. I'm like, are y'all preaching Christ or are y'all preaching the Church of Christ? Which one is it? Y'all, I had to find out for myself and heard it from the horse's mouth. And I called one of their organizations and the woman said, yes, we believe that if you are not baptized in the Church of Christ, that you are not saved and you are outside of the Ark of Salvation. And I said, well, listen, I've been saved for X amount of years and like I'm a Baptist and like I believe that Jesus hung, bled and died for my sins. I have accepted Jesus Christ and his finished work on the cross. I have chosen to put my trust in Jesus and all that stuff, right? And I said, and, and also I have been baptized, even though we don't believe that that's a requirement. I've been baptized. So you mean to tell me that after all of that and all these years of service in the faith that I'm not saved? She said, plain as day, sir, no, I don't agree with that. And I said plainly to her, well, why are you in this organization? And she said, plain as day, it's all I know. And if I left now, I would disappoint my mama. Y'all, I don't care which way you slice it. If you're preaching and teaching that you have to be baptized in the church of Christ in order to be saved, 
That right there is a cult. Lastly, number three, they believe that water baptism is a requirement to be saved. And the scripture they always run to is in the book of Acts chapter two, verses 37 and 38. Now, what we have to understand about the book of Acts is that, listen, when you look at the word of God, you have to understand that it is comprised of books that we go to to establish doctrine within the church and books that simply record history. Well, the book of Acts simply is recorded history. It records the acts that were done by the apostles. This is not a book that you go to to establish doctrine and theology in the church. But we're going to go ahead and play the game. Let's look at Acts 2, verse 37 and 38. It says, Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. Now he was answering a question. It says, when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, brothers, what shall we do? Now he was answering the question. So he replied in verse 38, Peter said this, Peter replied, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now in the spirit of the Great Commission, Peter was simply telling them, listen, this is what we come to do. This is what you have to do. You have to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior by repenting and also you have to be baptized. Now, the reason why he told them to be baptized is that so they could show an outward expression to people that they have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And that's exactly what we believe, the biblical followers of Jesus Christ. We believe that the water baptism is nothing but an outward expression of something that has already taken place in your heart. Now, let's look at a book that we go to to establish doctrine. Let's look at the book of Romans chapter chapter 10 verse 9 it says if you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead you will be saved doesn't say that you might be saved doesn't say you have to work to be saved it says that you will be saved now notice it doesn't mention anything about running to some body of water to go get dipped in the pool or anything like that to get baptized to be saved now according to the Church of Christ that's either a man major contradiction or somebody lying. And I don't know about you, but I choose to side on the word of God. Let's look at two practical examples real quick. Let's look at what Jesus said to the thief on the cross. When he said, today you'll be with me in paradise, there was no water involved in him going to paradise in that situation. And then let's look at another modern day practical example. Say for instance, uh, you have a teenage girl and she gets saved and she uh, accepts Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior and decides to put her hope and trust in Jesus. And then tragically she dies in a car accident before she can get baptized. Is she saved? Because that makes no sense whatsoever. You mean to tell me that God is going to cast someone into hell because they didn't make it to a body of water, yet they have already accepted Jesus Christ in their heart. And I say heart because this is the heart of a man. This is the heart in a man that simply pumps blood. But y'all think about the practicality or the unpracticality of these beliefs and say, yo, listen, there's something wrong with these beliefs. This right here, I can't necessarily say that this is something that would qualify someone to be a cult. However, this is sketchy and once again, heretical teaching at best. So let's review. We talked about how they believe that having instruments in the church is wrong. All right, that's that's questionable. Then they also believe that you have to be water baptized and that's very questionable. But then we also talked about how they believe that you have to be baptized in the church of Christ in order to be saved. And that right there, y'all, that one thing qualifies this organization as being a cult. Doesn't have to be two things, doesn't have to be three things. All it takes is one thing and that qualifies someone or some organization as being a cult. In the words of Stephen A. Smith, if it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, it ain't a 
mongoose and y'all know he can use some strong language at times but y'all listen if you're on the fence about whether or not you should join the church of christ this organization make sure you do your research before you join this organization if you're watching this and you belong to the church of christ don't get mad at me start questioning whoever's doing the preaching and teaching in your organization because you know y'all don't believe in pastors start examining what you believe and see if it matches up with the word of god i know this is a hot topic y'all but i have to believe that i helped somebody out there thanks for watching i hope i helped somebody on the other side of this video and for all the trolls or anybody else if you offended i really don't care don't despise them small beginners, learn to thank God for all things. Reach in a duplet, got hot water, but it only lasts about half an yeah, hour. Man. Ain't no time to be playing around, everybody take quick showers. Funds in the red, trying to budget.